Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is on strict priority arbitration. This is the first video in the series of code RTL where I'll be explaining the specification, then design it and verify it through test bench and also write assertion. So if you are a beginner, please watch the video till end and you will get a good understanding about VLSI design and verification. Now let's get back into strict priority arbitration in a design. When multiple sources need to share a common resource, we need arbitration schemes and strict priority arbitration is one of such schemes. In this arbitration, the requesting source has a fixed prioritization. To understand this, let's take a real world example and let's say you're traveling in a bus and there is only one seat empty and few other people are standing with you. So you can't just go and sit because the seat also has a fixed priority what do you mean so elders and needy person take the seat before you and this is very similar while sharing the resources in design let's say there are seven agents where agent zero has the highest priority agent one has the next highest priority and agent six has the lowest priority the highest priority agent will continue to get the grant from the resource as long as it keeps the request high the chance of getting grant for low priority agents will reduce this arbitration scheme is good for giving the differentiated service for a very important and higher priority agent. So now let's design the RTL for strict priority arbiter. This is a specification. Whenever there is a request, grant will be given according to the priority of agents. We have two agents, agent 0 and agent 1. Both will give the inputs request 0 and request 1. And request 0 has the highest priority over request 1. There will be no grants at the output if no request is asserted. And we will be using active low asynchronous reset. Now let's start the code. Let's define the ports for this module. We have clock reset request 0 request 1 grant 0 and grant 1 let's declare them as input and output we will use if else statement for the priority inside the always block upon reset both the grants will be 0 if request 0 is high then grant 0 will be 1 and grant 1 will be 0 if request 0 is low then only request 1 will get the grant that is grant 1 whenever there are no requests both the grants should be 0 so this is the simple code for the fixed arbiter now let's compile it and check it it has no compilation issues. This is the test bench for the design. We have registers, wires declared and the design is instantiated over here. In this initial block, we will set the values for the inputs. Here clock resets and both the requests are zero initially. And clock is being generated over here and it's toggling at every 5 nanoseconds. The design is at reset initially. After the delay of hash phi negages, the design is out of reset. After some time, we are making the request zero high and low again and applying the different combinations as we can see both the requests are high at same time and low at same time these are few combinations shown over here you can randomize the inputs and play with the different combinations as you like this code is for the waveform down now let's run the code using iverlock tool this is the command to run this will generate a vbb file and from this vbb file we will generate a vcd file so let's open the waveform let's add clock and reset waveform as you can see design is in reset at start now let's add the request zero it's high for two positive edges adding request 1 it is high continuously for 4 positive edges now let's check for the outputs grant 0 when request 0 is high grant 0 should be high as request 0 has high priority grant 0 should be high when both the requests are high at same time now let's add grant 1 when request 0 is low and request 1 is high grant 1 should be high from this waveform we can conclude our design is working fine now let's write the assertions to check the design in assertion check module, all the ports are input ports. We will be using the default clock and reset statement. With default clocking block, we don't have to write at the rate positive of clock every time in the property. And disable if is used to stop the assertions upon reset. With default disable if, we don't have to write the disable if in every property. Now let's analyze what assertion checks are required. We need to do the following checks. Reset check, request zero high priority check, and request one check. And the last and important check that is both grants should not be high at same time this is reset check property first we need to stop the default disable if so we are overriding it then we are using overlapped implication operator to check when there is a reset grant 0 and grant 1 should be low on next clock cycle the property is checked and one of the following statement is given out this assertion is triggered at every passage the consequent will be evaluated only when the antecedent is true so when reset is low the antecedent is true and the consequent is also also true as both the grants are zero at the next passage so reset check is okay will be displayed 
On other passages, assertion is vacuously successful as there is no reset applied. So antecedent will be false and consequent will not be checked. So this is the first assertion. Now let's go for the second assertion that is request zero high priority check. When request zero is high, then grant zero should be high and grant one should be low irrespective of request one value. This property is checked here and gives one of the following statement. The assertion is triggered at each and every passage but the consequent will be evaluated at the passage where request zero is high. After one cycle, when request zero is high, grant zero and grant one is evaluated. Grant zero is one, grant one is low. So while transition at edge, we consider the value before the edge so grand zero is one. So this statement will be displayed after the assertion check. Assertion keeps on checking at every passage and will check the consequent at the passage where request zero is high again. After one clock cycle, grand zero and grand one value is checked. Grand zero is one, grand one is low. And this statement will be displayed again. Now let's go for the assertion property of request one check. When request zero is low and request one is high, then the grant one should be high and grant zero should be low. And this assertion keeps on checking at each and every passage and will check the consequent at the passage where request one is high and request zero is low. As antecedent is true over here and at the next passage, grant one is one and grant zero is zero, this statement will be displayed. At this three passages, antecedent is true and consequent is also true. So so the statement will be displayed three times at each passage. Now let's go for the last and final important check. This is grant high property. Here we are checking at every passage that both grants should not be high at same time. This assertion is triggered at every passage as antecedent is always true. When assertion is triggered at this passage, grants are checked at the next passage and they are not high at the same time. So the assertion check is a success. This assertion is success at each and every passage. As you can see, both the grants are not high at the same time in every passage. The success statement will be displayed as many times as there's a passage. So there goes the assertions. We have designed and verified fixed priority arbiter. So if you want any other topic, then comment down below. I'll make a video on it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Please do subscribe and like this video. Jai Hind.